Mary Church Tarot, and the March to Many Freedoms. Women all over the world since before Christ were born, adorned, and hated. Queen had she put reigned in Egypt from 1479 until 1457 B.C. Had she put enhanced state structure in realms of religion, trade, domestic, and foreign policies. In 1450, the Minoans adorned women and worshipped goddesses more than men. But the closer it got to modern time, the treatment of women worsened. 1200 to 1000 BCE, Israeli women were demanded to have a son, and if she didn't, she would be buried in sand and stoned at from the neck up. 27 BC to 393 AD in ancient Rome, women of slaves were the most tortured. They were used to have kids, so more slaves would be on the master's farm. In 1912, foot binding was ordered by the government of China to everyone in the country. Women's feet were wrapped so tightly to where they were only four inches long. This was demanded so females would have very, very little movement. Mary Church Terrell, Memphis, Tennessee, in 1863, was a proud African-American woman of two slaves. Her father, Robert Church, was shot to death during a race riot in 1866, and when she realized what happened to her father, she began to follow her dreams. She attended Oberlin College and achieved her bachelor's degree in teaching. She taught for a while, but then went to Europe. She met with presidents about racism and issues such as lynching, especially since her friend Tom Moss was lynched by a white mob. President Benjamin Harris vowed to not remove lynching, and from then on, her fight for equality began. Being an educated woman, she began to see inequality for women all around the world, not just in America. In 1848, the Seneca Falls Convention was held by Elizabeth Cady Stanton, where she spoke of the absence of women's rights. Terrell held a position on the District Board of Education in 1895. She was the first black woman to achieve such an honor, and she ran with it. While she was on the Board of Education, she wanted to achieve as many of her goals as possible while she was on her pedestal. She picketed businesses in the District of Columbia along with normal folk because she wanted integration. Most of the business owners gave in and allowed coloreds in their places. Because of tarot, African Americans could eat in white-owned restaurants, watch movies alongside whites in theaters, and live in communities they were once prohibited. Of course, she was proud of the decision that integrated businesses, but that was only in District of Columbia, and she wanted more. She decided to join organizations such as the National Association of Colored Women, and helped found the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People with Mary White in 1909. Being an educated African-American woman, she decided to write a book to describe her life and show people what the world looked like through her eyes. In 1898, Terrell's book, The Progress of a Colored Woman, was published, but this was just one of her steps toward success. She wasn't going to stop working until she was satisfied. In 1904, she was invited to the International Congress of Women in Berlin, Germany. She gained supporters and brought back even more confidence. Since the 1890s, Mary Church Terrell, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and Susan B. Anthony had been fighting for women's rights. They spoke to officials with political power and they got nowhere with them. Stanton and Terrell felt they needed a larger voice so the political office would listen. So they invited Mary White, a woman's activist, to join the two of them. They brought to the Senate a greater idea and demand, and he vowed to make the changes. On August 18, 1920, the 19th Amendment was ratified. Although it was barely analyzed by the House of Representatives with the vote of 50 yeses of 99, it was finalized. This amendment gave every woman in the United States permission to vote. Terrell was filled with exuberance, but she still had another goal she wanted to achieve. The Jim Crow laws were in full effect since 1876. These laws kept racial segregation alive in the U.S., and she wanted to end it. These laws caused whites to receive a better education, more money, and better jobs. 
Terrell saw a fault and continued to protest against it. In 1951, a case that changed lives for blacks across the world was filed in the Federal District Court. The Oliver Brown v. Board of Education case was special to Mary because it dealt with the segregation of public schools. Black kids had to walk six blocks just to catch the bus across town to go to school when there was a school just four blocks from their home. The Plessy v. Ferguson case was overturned and allowed segregation. This case allowed African Americans a chance of redemption. May 17, 1954, a unanimous decision was made that prohibited public schools from segregation. Luckily, Tara was alive to see this incredible event happen. She brought together many organizations and led them to victories. Tara fought for success until she died at the age of 91. She left a lifelong legacy behind that continues to influence others. Today, blacks and whites are joined together in public places happily. Women cast their votes on ballots along with men, and African-American kids sit in classrooms alongside whites. Mary was a turning point in history. She was the march to many freedoms.